Uh, good morning in that. Yeah, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou. Live for you on YouTube today. You know, I, I, I don't know what you believe in. Uh, you know, from from like spiritual, uh, you know, faith perspective or anything like that. And, and it doesn't really matter. But every once in a while, something happens. And even the most skeptical of people have to sit back and go, you know, maybe there is somebody pulling the strings. <sighs> Good morning, Barner. So everybody knows the Barner has been crying for years and years and years about their schedule is not fair. It's not fair, woo. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically crying, I guess, because... Uh, you know, they had to play, uh, they had to play Georgia and Alabama at the end of the year in a three-week period. Now, besides the obvious idiocy of complaining about something like that, uh, well, well hell, I'll go ahead and point it out. Uh, I don't remember the barn crying about having to play Alabama at the end of the year from about 1993 to 2007 when Alabama was in the toilet. I don't remember the barn crying when George, about having to play Georgia and Alabama in a three-week period at the end of the year when Georgia was struggling through some of those Mark Rick years, winning nine and ten meaningless games a year. Uh, it, you know, it, college football is cyclical. You would think the barn would know this because in 2010 they were pretty good and now they're in the toilet. So you should know that, like, it, it, it tends to go up and down. So... Just crying about the fact that you had to play two teams that happen to be good now in a three-week period at the end of the year never made any sense to start with. It just it just didn't. But like most domestic abuse victims, this whole Me Too movement has got people so messed up in the mind that the SEC went ahead and gave in to Auburn and moved the Georgia game. And, of course, this news came out some months back that the George Auburn game was going to be moved up earlier in the season. And then yesterday, the schedule finally comes out for the 2020 season. And, yes, Georgia has been moved up. <laughs> but what did the SEC do to the barn, though? Hmm, well, let's see what they do. I'll try to put the schedule up on the screen if I can, but I'm on vacation at the beach. I don't have my computer and all that. But it, 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 anyway, it doesn't matter. Auburn has gone from playing, at the end of the year, Georgia, an FCS or lower classification school, and then Alabama, right? So a three-week period, Georgia, a team you've never heard of in a lower classification, and then Alabama. They've gone from that to now, their last two games of the year, that team you've never heard of, they're gone. They're not on the barn schedule at the end of the year anymore. The, uh, the SEC has, has done took the barn, bent them over their knee, and spanked their little bottom blue. Last two games of the year for the barn in 2020, LSU and Bama. So there you go, barn. I hope you're happy. Uh, instead of playing Georgia and Alabama in a three-week period, you now play LSU and Alabama in back-to-back -back weeks to end your season. On top of that, on top of that, Texas A&M. You used to play, this year, for example, you're playing Texas A&M and Mississippi State in back-to-back -back weeks. Now, Mississippi State is heading in this direction. Guess which direction Texas A&M is heading in? This direction. In case you're new to college football or haven't been paying attention lately, uh, and I know a lot of you hate Jimbo Fisher and you're so blinded by that, you have no clue what's going on, but if you had to name right now the four teams in the SEC that you think are best positioned to make really good runs, have really good seasons over the next four, five, six years, it would be these four teams in no particular order. Georgia, Bama, LSU, Texas A&M, and maybe put Florida in there. You, you have to play Georgia and Texas A&M in back-to-back -back weeks in the middle of the season in 2020. And then you have to turn around in your last two games of the season, you have to play Alabama and LSU. So you've gone from Texas A&M and Mississippi State in back-to-back -back weeks. No one's afraid of Mississippi State. You've gone from that to Texas A&M and Georgia in back-to-back -back weeks. You've gone from a lower classification or FBS school or sometimes even a bye week 
before you play Alabama to now having to play LSU and Alabama in back-to-back -back weeks. So what does this mean? Well, it means a few things. It means that in general, you can expect Auburn to lose a minimum of four games every single year for the foreseeable future. We know they're not beating Georgia. They're 4-11 in the last 15 games against Georgia. And this is why, or one of the reasons why, the main reason why, this whole thing with the barn crying about their schedule never made any sense from the word go. It just never made any sense from the beginning because it doesn't matter when you play Georgia. It doesn't matter where you play Georgia. The odds are very, very high that you're getting beat. I mean, Georgia has owned you since the beginning of time. And they own you, they own you now. I mean, no matter how you look at it, Georgia just completely owns the barn. We, we, we own you all time. We have a two-game winning streak. If you want to look at this century, we have a winning record. If you want to look at the last 15 games, we're 11-4 and four against you. It doesn't matter when we play. It doesn't matter where we play. We, we could jump into Back to the Future DeLorean, fire up the flux capacitor, and go back to almost any year ever, and Georgia would beat you. So it never made any sense for you to cry about the schedule. It was a participation trophy move from the get-go. It was a millennial snowflake, everybody gets a ribbon, hashtag me too, it's not fair, cry baby, desperation move from the very beginning for the barn. And I, for one, am glad that the SEC gods or the SEC office or whatever magic man it is in the sky that's got his hands on things and controlling things, whatever you believe. I, for one, have no problem and am perfectly happy with the fact that they have bent you over and shoved it in dry. <sighs> you might as well just forget Auburn even has a team for the foreseeable future. But have a good morning, though.